There are 20,000 non-towered airports in the United States. On June 6th of this year, the FAA updated their best practices for airport flight operations at these airports. Are you interested in learning the FAA's latest guidance for entering and flying in the pattern? Are you ready to learn at least one thing the FAA wants pilots to stop doing? If so, buckle up, because we're about to review the ins and outs of non-towered pattern procedures. <laughs> This new advisory circular, 90-66 Charlie, includes a ton of good information. But before we talk about getting into and out of non-towered airports, let's start with some general principles. First, there are several recommendations in this advisory circular that seem obvious, simple, or common sense. Please don't gloss over them. Usually when the FAA emphasizes something, it's because of past accidents or incidents. Take all of these suggestions seriously to ensure you don't become part of a NASA report or an NTSB investigation. Second, the advisory circular identifies the default pattern for all non-towered airports as left traffic. This means that when you're in the pattern, the runway should be off your left wing and you should be making left turns. There are airports that utilize non-standard patterns for some or all of their runways. These should be identified in the airport chart supplement or noted on the VFR sectional chart. The bottom line is, if you don't see anything in the sectional or in the chart supplement, you should be flying left traffic at all non-towered airports. Third, the circular notes the FAA does not regulate traffic pattern entry, only traffic pattern flow. This means when entering the traffic pattern at an airport without an operating control tower, inbound pilots are expected to listen and observe other aircraft already in the pattern and conform to whatever traffic pattern is in use. If there are no other aircraft present, the pilot should check traffic indicators on the ground and wind indicators to determine which runway and traffic pattern direction to use. Further, pilots should be alert and watchful for other aircraft that may not be following the standard or documented pattern. This could include aircraft practicing instrument approaches, aircraft that need specific runways for performance reasons, or even <coughs> pilots that just aren't following the documented best practice. <laughs> Speaking of best practices, this circular specifically calls out a practice the FAA would like pilots to stop doing. But before we talk about that, let's discuss the traffic pattern. <laughs> let's start with takeoff and departure from a non-towered airport. First, before crossing or entering the runway, ensure you won't interfere with any traffic arriving on the same or other runways. I know this sounds like common sense, however the FAA mentions it several times in the circular and runway incursions are still a problem. So please take an extra few seconds to listen to CTAF and look for traffic that might be a factor prior to entering the runway. Once you're off the ground, continue flying the runway center line. If you're departing the pattern, keep flying straight out or make a 45 degree turn in the same direction as the traffic pattern only after you reach pattern altitude. If you're staying in the pattern, don't start your turn to crosswind until you're a half mile past the runway and at or above 300 feet below pattern altitude. Then, make sure you're at pattern altitude before making your turn to downwind. This guidance encourages everyone to fly the pattern the same. If everybody turns crosswind at approximately the same place, and if everybody's at pattern altitude before they turn downwind, it should be easier to see and avoid other aircraft. What about pattern entry? The FAA recommends all traffic enter the pattern on a 45 degree angle from the downwind, a beam the midpoint of the runway to be used for landing. In all cases, you should be at pattern altitude before entering the pattern. This is easy if you're on the downwind side of the runway. In this case, simply adjust the route of flight so that you intercept the downwind at the appropriate spot. Things get a bit more complicated if you're approaching from the upwind side. In this case, the preferred method of pattern entry is to overfly midfield of the airport at least 500 feet above pattern altitude. Then, approximately two miles away from the runway, make a descending teardrop turn that will place you on the recommended 45 degree pattern entry. If the pattern is not busy, another acceptable method for entering from the upwind side is to approach the airport and cross midfield at pattern altitude, then immediately turn downwind. In this scenario, you need to be very careful about fitting yourself into the flow of any existing traffic without endangering yourself or other aircraft. Once in the pattern, you should maintain pattern altitude until you are abeam the approach end of the landing runway on the downwind leg. The base leg turn should start when the aircraft is at a point approximately 45 degrees relative bearing from the approach end of the runway. 
I like to describe this as the threshold being halfway between the trailing edge of the wing and the tail of the airplane. Finally, you should turn base to final at least a quarter mile from the intended runway and maintain the center line all the way through landing. This is especially critical if you're at an airport with parallel runways. So, what is it that the FAA would like pilots to stop doing? Put simply, they'd like pilots to stop doing VFR straight in approaches. Throughout the text of the advisory circular, there are at least four times the authors specifically state the FAA does not recommend straight in approaches because of the risk of mid air collision. The circular does note that aircraft practicing instrument approaches in VMC may perform straight in approaches, but states that they will not receive any priority. Further, it warns them to be alert for other aircraft already in the pattern to avoid interrupting the flow of traffic. By the way, we have barely touched all the information in this circular. If you'd like to see what else is covered, I've put a link to download it below in the video description. If you like this video and would like to support this channel, please consider a donation through Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description below and any support is greatly appreciated. Also, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I would recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time. <laughs>